is the latest version of the Massey Ferguson lawn tractor range and I thought it was an opportune moment two years into ownership to do a little bit of a review see what I like about it see what I don't like about it and invite comments from other people with their experiences of the Massey Ferguson lineup As an owner of the Massey Ferguson, there's a couple of things that I'm really, really happy about. The first is the ultra tight turning circle. The second thing I'm really pleased about with this tractor is they've kept the center of gravity and the weight really low down. power the 20 horsepower Kohler motor does a really good job and the machines quite fast over ground all of the control surfaces are pretty much as you'd expect them to be you've got your brake over here that stops the machine pretty much instantly you've got your regular sort of paddle control throttle here we'll get back to the key in a minute because that's a bit annoying we've got our uh, on off for our blades here which is electronically controlled and we've got our choke for cold starts over here you barely need it if you're starting the machine when it's cold pull it on about half of it half a bit turn the key and turn it off immediately and then over here you've got your hydraulic reverse and your hydraulic forward controls um, they are really easy to operate no gears required lots of variable speed really good value up on the dash we've even got our electronic hour meter which is kind of cool and idiot warning lights for battery and oil and, and the fact that the blades are on and all that sort of stuff. Okay, biggest problem with this. You go to start the machine, you've got to go, go all the way across to the right. Once your machine's started, the key goes back to this normal forward function. The minute you hit reverse, your blades will stop working. So what you have to do, once you've started the mower, is come back to the reverse forwards, then hit the yellow button to say, yes, you understand it's dangerous to go in reverse with the blades on, then you can start mowing. I particularly enjoy this little safety sign here. I think it means don't put your kit under the mower. At first I was a little bit confused by the stubby holder in the side of the mower here. And I thought, surely that can't work. But now I've understood, this is to future-proof the machine. Millennials can now use this machine and never be more than 10 seconds away from their bottle of water while they're doing the lawn. I've been mowing for 10 minutes, I'm thirsty. Ah. There's a handy feature on the back too, if you ever run out of juice or anything like that and you need to push the machine around, you can quickly disconnect the transmission and walk the machine wherever you need to go. One thing I absolutely love about this machine is the ease of service. It is so well designed. Down in the engine bay here, you don't need a single tool to do a standard service. Changing the oil without a tool is really easy. All you have to do is flick the black cap underneath the starter motor, twist this yellow piece of plastic, attach a bit of 13 mil irrigation tube to it, and then pull out and the oil starts to drain. Changing the oil filter is really easy. It's nicely exposed on the left hand side of the engine. Got my can ready to take the excess oil and job's done. Changing the air filter couldn't be easier. Lift that up, pull off the clip and out she comes. No screws, no nothing. <laughs>
10 minutes we'll remove the irrigation tube push this in lock it off by turning it quarter of a turn to the right and replace the secondary cap now we're ready to fill with oil Now another pet hate that I have with this otherwise beautiful mower is the deck design. If you're going to be replacing a belt, which I tend to have to replace about every 12 months, you need to take the deck off. Now what should be a very well designed and simple process has one niggling issue in it, so I'll just take you through that now. It starts out easy. Lower your deck to the ground. Remove your front pin. Release your two catches, one each side. And now your deck's free. Or is it? As it turns out, there's one annoying little devil in the detail here, and that is the retainer for the belt. To take that off, we've got to leak, we've got to get ourselves to a bolt right up underneath the chassis and underneath the engine that couldn't be put in a more awkward spot if you tried. Now mind you, I'm not complaining about having to undo a bolt. It's a machine, it has bolts. But when you make every other step in the process so easy and then you end the process with a really hard to get to bolt for what is really just a, a retaining strap, um, I think there's a better idea. I think there's a better solution out there and it just really annoys me that the design sort of stops halfway through a process. Now that we've got the deck out, here's where our adventures in global machinery making begin. To work on the motor or the chassis, you're going to need a metric set of tools. To work on the deck, you're going to need Imperial. Yes folks, you got it right. Metric, Imperial, made in two different countries and assembled together as the one machine. Something that's probably worth mentioning is if you look under the seat you'll see that this is an MTD Yardman and it's just been rebadged with some lovely Massey Ferguson stickers. Which leads me to ask the question, why buy a Massey Ferguson when there are so many other brands around, maybe even a couple of hundred dollars cheaper? For me, the value of the brand name of Massey Ferguson is in the dealer network. The part numbers you need are on catalogues. The company hasn't closed down and moved into state. There will always be a Massey Ferguson dealer around. And for me, that gets the thumbs up. And that is why I would buy a Massey Ferguson over a cheap branded tractor that's probably the same. So as a two year owner of this Massey Ferguson machine, I find it incredibly easy to use, really fast and good at its job fantastic ergonomics, easy to service, but with a few little niggling issues, like your mismatched bolts and nuts, like your incomplete design with the deck housing, just things that just annoy you. They're just enough to annoy you. I hope that review helped. Um, and if you're thinking of a 4220, I would suggest they're a damn good buy. See you next time.